the next thing that we are going to learn today is programming paradigms. Program paradigms means like how we can write the programs. So the methods, different ways of writing the programs, basically different methods of writing the programs. And uh, basically we can declare these paradigms into two categories. There are two categories, imperative and declarative. Imperative means basically it's a way of telling something um, we can call it what, <coughs> right? So here in the declarative, you just declare the status, how it looks like and what to do and what you want basically. In the declarative programming, you de declare what you want. And so in the imperative program, you explain how things happen, how things should happen. And here, what you want. Basically, this is used in high, more higher level languages like SQL uh, and Prolog, Lisp, like, like, so basically some more higher level languages, AI, artificial intelligence, you used declarative. <laughs> what you want, you tell it, I need this. So it will be done, right? Then, but imperative is basically you are implementing that. How you need that, how you want that, you have to implement step by step, one by one. That is imperative. Okay, let's learn. So what are these? A declarative. So declarative language can be functional or it can be uh, logic programming, like prolog. Prolog coming in artificial intelligence. Functional programming means like you have a set of functions. We learn about functions. These functions are executed to do something. That is functional programming. And imperative. So this traditional languages like C, Ada, Pascal, these are coming under imperative. Now, object-oriented languages are little complex than, that is also imperative, but little complex than the traditional structured languages. Okay, let's learn about these different paradigms. So please try down the heading, programming paradigms. Sorry programming paradigms. Programming paradigms. G, G, paradigms. It explains ways of writing a program. There are different ways. There are alternative ways of writing the same program. Example, procedural. programming, functional oriented programming, object oriented programming, these are different ways of writing a program, functional oriented object-oriented, procedural. So these are some paradigms. So let's learn about them shortly. So what's the difference? Okay, let's learn about them. Procedural programming.
it calls procedures which is dedicated calls calls procedures which is dedicated to do specific tasks different tasks are defined under different procedures we need to call them when running the main program so they are dedicated to for a specific task the main program we need to call them when running the main program so you learn about the procedures similar to that different procedures we well, let's say bank a bank system has different procedures deposit withdraw deposit withdraw uh, calculate interest transfer so these procedures are previously declared when you run this you call them then structured programming it breaks a large program to small modules of chords module of chords to a small module into a small module of chords modules of chord right small modules of chord Okay. Then, um, okay. The one of the main concept is object-oriented programming. Let's learn about that as well. But uh, another thing. So under the structured programming, this emphasize usage of this emphasizes usage of control structures to focus in more on the process processors more on the processors rather than participating entities you know the structures uh, like control structures right control structures are everywhere control structures are not limited to structured uh, programming it's it's they are in the procedural programming it's they are in uh, other imperative and declarative all the approaches these things are there then the object oriented programming
this focuses more on entities and yes entities and participants more than the procedures or activities class and object is the main concept behind this class what is class let's say learn what is class is a blueprint or template for a set of similar types of objects object and instance or real life representation of the class so let's see how it happens right what is class and what is object so let's see by examples so I'll copy it from the single medium node that is easier for me rather than retyping. Okay, class and object basically, these are the basic principles in object oriented. I'll explain. So no need to understand the in like in depth, but just try to get surface knowledge or idea about this. That is enough, right? Okay, here I'm, I'm copying this. Let's write this as an example, right? You can see this is a class. The class has class name, attributes, and methods. Attributes, properties, features. So same thing, right? So you can see in the book also it's given as um, here, properties, properties, methods, attributes. Yes, I'll explain that, right? Here, attributes and behaviors. Methods are also called, these are actually uh, data. Represents data and features data features then behaviors methods represent functions and processes classes we let you let us create objects and the objects communicate with other objects using data passing I'll explain that now, right? Okay, first of all, please write down, draw this and write down this. I'll explain after that. Right, this is, uh, what is this blueprint? Blueprint or template is like, how we are going to, it's like, okay, think about the block, which we use to create bricks. Block cannot be used to construct houses, but the bricks, it's possible. Uh, similar to that, think about that, uh, you know, in the new year, uh, the new year time, we are using different, different blocks to create some uh, food items, sweets, etc. Cookies are done, cookies are chewy. Cookies are chewy, cookies are chewy, cookies are chewy. 
So similar to that, this is a block. This is just a block or blueprint or template. Template we can't use for anything, but when you use the template and create an object, then we can use. This template has the class name, attributes and methods. So when we create object, this is the structure of the object. So you can write uh, the student name is Kasun and uh, the student ST name Kasun, it's a Tikshana. And gender male and DOP and this thread is English medium. So let's say when you write like this, that is called an object. So object is an instance of a class. So similar to that, we can create number of instances, any number of instances. That is up to you. So this block is used using this block, any number of instances are created. It's not focusing about how things happen. So I said that in one programming paradigm, so banking, for an example, banking, let's say in the, uh, the procedural programming, so let's say, yeah, let's take procedural programming. It calls different procedures, deposit procedure, withdraw procedure, transfer procedure. So you have procedures. We can call the procedures and get things done. That is the banking app. But object-oriented programming, you are not going to talk about what the deposit procedure, withdraw procedure. Instead of that, you are telling about the participants who are there. In the banking system, banker is there, account is there, yes, bank, account, currency is there. So those are the things. In the account, you can mention the account number, account name, account holders number, whatever, EOB, account open date, the initial balance, all these things you can tell, those are the properties. And the behaviors, under behaviors, you can mention deposit withdraw, that can be done, what account can do. That is going under the behaviors. But procedure are under the Kalimba processes for the Tama Murthanade. I will make the objects for it, make in a account Kelekakthin, account take account number, Ovagate gates data take up in. There's a deposit withdrawal killer procedures. The procedures in any Kathule. So actually, this is some advanced version of that programming concept. Right? That is the object oriented concept. Please write down example for object. This is the structure and this is how it is organized. So let's go and explore this more. Please write down first. Okay, that's enough time now. Uh, let's move to the book again. Okay, let's go through this and so see what they are given. 
Okay, you can see the procedural programming. This is what the procedure one, procedure two, procedure three, and these procedures represent codes and data are given as inputs to these procedures. And when data are given as inputs, it will be taken and going through this procedure. And the finally, two different procedures, okay, let's say procedure making a cake. First, get in the ingredients and mix it. Then bake it. Likewise, the different procedures at the different stages. Ingredients, mixing ingredients, you can see. So ingredients will be there. Then baking uh, in the baking process. So whatever related to baking should be given. So that is procedural. In the procedural programming here, this is very clear example. This will give you a better idea. You tell, okay, keep block A, keep block B on top of the K, block A, keep block C on top of block uh, B. So we think the computer as a fool, and we think a computer, the computer as a fool, and tell, okay, A with A would in B with A, B would in C with A, then Harry, thank you. But we know what will happen, but we tell the computer each and everything in the procedural paradigm. But computer won't understand what is happening, and we will give the instruction according to that, the computer act, and we will get the output. Method, where did you know, no, no, ट but in the declarative paradigm, you tell what you want. You can say, I need a triangle. Hey, I need a triangle. I need a pizza. And likewise, a pillar which consists of three blocks. I need a pizza with three slices. You tell what you want. So this is more smart, right? This is more smart, but advanced. In this one, it's not smart. It's just giving the processes. The structured program, in the other hand, so it modularizes. It has like top-down approach. It modularizes the structures. Right? It has modules, the structures. These structures are basically subsystems and systems. By merging them, the entire system is created. But in the other hand, the object which has the property and method, you can see different objects. They interact with passing messages. The interact by sending messages, passing messages. Let's say this is account. It says withdrawal message to ATM. And this is the customer. Customer will send withdrawal request to ATM. Likewise, the customer, ATM, uh, the bank account, teller. So the things, the people interact with the system. This is how actually we can see the system. This is how actually we can see the system. That is called static view of the system. Or how actually we can see the system. That is called structure, uh, the object-oriented approach. And see here, the structured approach. So we tell the system, okay, what to do. For an example, in the banking system. So we tell withdraw, deposit, generate report, calculate interest. We tell what to do. But here, in the object-oriented approach, on the other hand, I said, the, you can see the bank, account, teller, ATM, the things, the objects participating in this process. That is what you tell. Okay, let's say the same library example. If you get the library example into structured program, and here you can see the librarian book, library catalog, those things in object oriented approach. But in the structured programming, you think about borrow a book, return a book, add new book, think about what is happening in the library. Vena Deval, in the Katigan Hitan, Vena Deval Tikatama Hitan in structured program. In the Katigan Hitan, that is object oriented program. There is the difference between these two concepts. And you can see this is the template. Template is not a dog, so it cannot bark. Right? Template is not a dog. It cannot bark, but dot concept is there. Dog has color, eye color, height width. But when it comes to a real dog, Tommy, so you can say the color is gray, eye color is this, and uh, height is this. 
for real dog you can tell this person real dog can bark right but still this is the dog template and this is the actual dog dog template is the class actual dog is the object so i think the concept is clear enough now the procedural languages it has code separately and data separately we need to put data and use the code in to get that cake ka kadana kiyam let's say we are making a cake we have the cake machine we need to put the ingredients and the cake will come out we need to put the ingredients this is data and cake will come out due to this process ek pack lagin dem mane patte cake ka hadi denawa kiyala api that is like procedural language basically you data and uh, the code is into but here in the object oriented language both data and code resides in this object actually em ani the mage hakiyawat thiyenne mage athule oyage hakiyawal thiyenne oyage athule let's say teach and student teacher has teachers uh, properties and methods the student has students properties and methods. that is the actual view this is more realistic natan teaching kiyana process ekata lamaya wadana teacher wadana eliyata ganna lamaya wai teacher wai ुडेंटेशन on properties they can communicate by message passing that is the actual view that is object oriented concept that is more realistic approach and we can say it encapsulate what is encapsulate you know encapsulate in amoxicillin encapsulate capsule is kind of medicine a method of giving medicine in capsule you don't know what is inside but everything is inside it's fixed it's sealed so similar to that the data and uh, the related code and the data is capsule so this is more expandable you know this is more expandable you can add new object remove existing objects but here in this machine so let's say you got a cake machine so can you create a pizza using create cake machine no it's only for making cakes because this machine is hard wired or programmed to make cake that's all you can only make cake but here in this context pute so if you have different different things you can combine and generate new innovative concept it's a more complex it's more complex but you can always generate innovative things that is what the objective or in the programming is okay the programming and scripting we have already discussed the language translators we have already discussed the interpreter compiler we have already discussed and yes that is we have come to end of this wonderful lesson maybe this is boring lesson to you i don't know but anyway we have come to end of this lesson so we this is actually the longest lesson in your syllabus in your all level syllabus the longest lesson have it 51 pages allocated for that and for most of the student it is the most difficult lesson as well but in the first instant we have finished first 11 days we have finished the longest most difficult lesson and now you can stop the classes right don't come to the classes after today that is the thing happening in the classes mostly right when i start doing all our classes and when i finish the most difficult lesson our students still being all right now we can do everything we know programming very good so the remaining lessons are easy so no need to go for classes so they will just uh, loiter and they will just go here and there and after that when the examination is closed they they are again come in and ask sir can we do a revision class then i am asking why why didn't you come to the class so uh, so we have done the main thing we thought that others are not much informed so we didn't come to the classes and i couldn't come to classes properly so likewise they are responding with various excuses don't do that even though you have finished the most difficult part the other parts are also important in the lesson so next day we will be discussing about the system development life cycle the second lesson but actually speaking i have already discussed some points of this within two days we can finish that 
But I think before doing that, we need to do some examination questions because we need to see, we need to know how the questions are coming. So next day, I'll discuss the examination point of view. And also, I'll try to start the new lesson. Okay. Till then, I'll stop from here since we have finished. We are today. We don't have time to discuss. We only five minutes are there. Cannot discuss the questions today. So let's discuss that part next day and move to the new lesson. Okay. Then good night. See you all next week. Good night, sir. Thank you, sir.